Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So in this video I thought I'd show you this experiment that I've had going on for the past few months in which I'm electrolyzing down large quantities of water into oxygen and hydrogen gas and I will hopefully be left with uh, something called deuterium or heavy water. Now deuterium is a nice type of hydrogen where instead of having just a proton in the nucleus it has both a proton and a neutron making it twice as heavy. However this isotope of hydrogen only occurs in one in every 6400 atoms meaning that water which has quite a bit of hydrogen only has one milliliter of water containing this deuterium in every 6.4 liters. Now the thing about deuterium is that it's really hard to separate from regular hydrogen seeing as it's chemically similar in every way except for how heavy it is. However, electrolysis, what I'm doing here, is actually very selective in the way that it picks out hydrogen to turn into hydrogen gas from water. In fact, it's actually 10 times more likely to pick out a regular hydrogen from a deuterium isotope. So, if I electrolyze down 6.4 litres of water, I should theoretically have one milliliter of water containing just deuterium. Now it's not 100% efficient, in fact the way I'm doing it I've calculated that I'll have to electrolyze down around a bit over 12 litres of water in order to get one milliliter of this heavier isotope of hydrogen. But hopefully by the end of the electrolysis runs I will have around about a milliliter of water that will be measurably heavier than regular water. Now the setup that I've got currently is like the one here. I've got a lead dioxide anode generating oxygen gas, lead metal cathode generating hydrogen gas from a sulfuric acid solution. I'll start off in the vessel with 400 milliliters worth of water and then I'll electrolyze that down, turn it into oxygen and hydrogen gas until it reaches the point where it's 200 milliliters worth of water. And the hydrogen isotope of deuterium should be twice as concentrated by this point or roundabout. Now in order to save sulfuric acid I'm not going to be performing this 60 times in order to electrolyze down enough water Instead, I'm going to just refill this back up to 400 milliliters every time that it reaches down to that 200 milliliter point. And I'll do that electrolysis cycle, electrolyze it down to 200 milliliters, fill it back up to 400 with regular water. And I'll do that 10 times, and then I should be left with what I've calculated it to be an 8 times concentrated solution containing deuterium. This way I can use 10 times less acid and then just electrolyze the concentrated solution at a later date. At this stage I've done two sets of this 10 electrolysis cycles and I currently have 400 milliliters worth of that 8 times concentrated deuterium in water. Hopefully in a future video in a few months I'll have quite a large quantity of deuterium enriched water but for now I'll just cut back to when I've just finished the first 10 cycles of electrolysis and I'll talk you through it from there. Alright, here we are, a few months earlier. You can see I've just finished the tenth cycle of electrolysis where I'm filling up water to 400 mils right here and then electrolyzing it down to 200 mils and I've filled it back up and done that ten times. So what I should be left with is around an eight times concentrated solution of deuterium in water. But over the months that I've been doing this uh, you can kind of see that the electrodes haven't fared too well. There's all this spongy lead down the bottom. This copper cathode that I've been trying to use, lead from this, uh, the anode has been electroplating across and forming spongy lead that's all fallen down and it's all gotten all messy. So what I'm going to do now is filter off all that and put it into this milk carton, HDPE container, so that the sulfuric acid solution doesn't interfere with anything. And I'm going to do this four more times so that I've got an entire litre of uh, eight times concentrated deuterium. But what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to make a better lid for the glass jar, better electrodes. I won't use a copper cathode this time. I use both lead electrodes so that I can switch the polarity every now and again to stop it from electroplating too far. Anyway, let's take the lid off and filter that now.
Alright, so now I'll go and wash off all of this spongy stuff at the bottom and remove the electrodes, put a new lid on it. Alright, so I've cleaned off all the gunk at the bottom and now to clean the electrodes, get rid of any uh, lead dioxide, I'm going to fill this, I've filled it with uh, sodium carbonate solution and I'm going to dip a small graphite electrode in as the anode then connect both the lead and copper electrode to negative and that should clean off any lead dioxide convert it back to lead metal. Let's turn that on now. There we are. You should start to see some bubbling. You can see it better here, I think. And now that lead dioxide on this electrode here should be converting back to lead metal. see but you can't really see the color change there it's a bit more clear without the camera but the browny red color of the lead dioxide is converting back to the kind of gray silvery color of lead I'll let that go for a few minutes and then empty out the sodium carbonate solution you can kind of see there the color change because the uh, the top of the lead the electrodes closer to the uh, you can't really see it the, the carbon rod so that's going to be converting first to the lead metal and then the stuff down the bottom you can still see the kind of brownish color of the lead dioxide leave that going for a couple more minutes that's done all the lead dioxide here should be replaced with lead metal now I'll go and rip the lid off and replace the electrodes I've just made some new lead electrodes got the glass jar here new lid new little screw on cap so that I can connect the bubbler and I'm just going to solder the electrodes on silicon that to the top and I'll get back to you when that's done there we are all done see the lead electrodes in there the lids siliconed on got these little alligator clips for connecting the wires and the screw on cap for the bubbler that should be good to go by tomorrow All right. Uh, it's actually been four days now since I siliconed that up together. But the silicon should be pretty dry now. So what we're going to do now is add some 2 molar sulfuric acid. showed you how to make this in another video. And I'm going to fill that. Up to around about 200 milliliter mark that I've made some time back. And a little bit more. should do it and then fill the rest up with regular rainwater. All right I'll take it over to the power supply and we'll switch it on. Now I've got it hooked up to the power supply so let's switch that on. Got it running at 5 volts we should start to see that's a bit tricky to see there in the, in the darkness like that but there's a few hydrogen bubbles coming off that electrode we're getting oxygen off the other one right now it's just running at around 4 amps but that should pick up when we convert the lead anode to lead dioxide Right, so I've left that going for a few minutes and you can see we're already up to nearly 7 amps there so I might stick it down in this coolant bath and leave it going overnight and I'll do 10 of these electrolysis cycles and we'll be left with another 200 milliliters of 8 times concentrated deuterium water. So it's been another month and what I've done is repeated the electrolysis another 10 times so what I should have down here is another 200 milliliters of 8 times concentrated deuterium in water like I had last time. So what I'll do now is filter it off and then add it to my sample that I've got over here.
So now that that's done, what I've effectively got here is 4.4 litres of water that's been electrolyzed down to 400 millilitres, giving us around about an eight times concentrated solution of deuterium. Once I've filled this up, I'm actually going to do two litres of this eight times concentrated stuff instead of one litre like I said last time. But once I've finished this, I'll electrolyze all this down until we've got around about a millilitre of heavy water. And to start the next set of electrolysis cycles, we'll fill up like we did last time, 200 millilitres of 2 molar of sulfuric acid and then another 200 millilitres of distilled water giving us a 1 molar concentration of sulfuric acid with lead electrodes to electrolyse. Seeing as just having one electrolytic cell would take a really long time to get really any quantity of deuterium. I've set up a second cell here, you can see it works in the exact same way. Do the electrolysis cycles ten times and you'll have this one actually, it's a little bit bigger, you'll have 300 milliliters of eight times concentrated deuterium in water. Except this one actually runs on uh, having a sodium hydroxide electrolyte instead of sulfuric acid. That way when they both finish off I'll be able to neutralize the solution by just mixing them together. So you can't really see right now because the solution's gone all murky, but the electrodes inside have actually fared really well. And being able to switch the current polarity, I've been able to keep electrode wear to a minimum. So hopefully the electrodes will last the whole experiment, not like the last ones. So now that I've got it all set up, I've got it in this coolant bucket. And we'll watch the ammeter as we turn it on. Hopefully we'll get a fair amount of current. Yeah, it normally starts out ooh, normally starts out with a really high current because we've reversed the polarity, so we're essentially discharging the battery with current. And now you can see it's kind of slowing down back to 10 amps, maybe a bit below. We'll see where it ends up. And there we are, stopped at around five and a half amps. Actually now that I've waited a few hours, it's built its way all the way up to eight amps. Much better. So I'll leave this running for another month and filter it off like last time, along with this one as well. And hopefully, in a fair while, we'll have some highly concentrated deuterium water. Catch you next time.